Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stan <laughs> All right, we're coming in for Love and Mary Trustville. It is season four, episode six, I Wanda Have a Kiki. Let me go ahead and apologize for our absence on last week. Yeah, man. We kind of went on a mini vacation with our moms, and we had a fabulous time. Somewhere yes, in there, we did squeeze in power. But we didn't have Love and Marriage Huntsville to give last week. Yeah, that's, yes. That's basically why we didn't do it last week. But we here this week. Yes, we here to bless y'all and whatnot. So let's go ahead and get into it because this entire episode was BS to me. And I'm in rare, I'm in rare form tonight. I've had a glass of wine. <laughs> or two. Or two. Um, but anyway, so we have Destiny going over to Martell's because piggybacking off of last week, you know, her and Mel had... An opportunity to hash out their differences or the lack thereof. That Mel feels like Destiny wasn't a good friend to her. And Destiny was like, listen, you talking to me and texting me is two totally different things. Right. Now, I understand what Mel was saying. On that stage, you made it seem like we had no communication after the break of recording for the show. But in actuality, we did communicate. We've had some dialogue, at least, although we weren't talking. We have to get into this mindset that talking these days means any form of communication. It could be mean DMs, it could Text, be comments, email. everything, because yeah. everything, I mean, yeah. <laughs> talking is in all kinds of forms this day and time. So right. I get what Mel was saying, like, don't get on there and act like we haven't had anything going on, because we have. So piggybacking off of that, we see Destiny roll up over Martel's house and she tells Martel that basically her and Mel's relationship is basically at a wash right now. She feels like when the break between Martel and her happened, that they should have kind of just like severed yeah. ties. And that's what, and that's, I'm like, yeah, that, that's where like kind of where, like we said, the double-edged sword is being mature enough to separate your friends. And I don't think Destiny should depart, much as we can't right. stand Martell, but Martell was the one that brought her into the circle. So why mm -hmm. should he cut her off before you when y'all two was not the one that was close? Yeah. Now, if Mel had brought her in, that's a whole new different story. So I'm not going behind mm -hmm. your back, but yeah, but I know they got close, you know, being because, in the friend, of because of Martell, but I don't think Martell, you know, especially since their relationship was never sexual. Or, right. And yeah, it's just they they kick it. They're like brothers and sisters. So, yeah, yeah they like she fucking them. And that's what I was saying. Like, even even with that said, even if it was the opposite of way, uh, way around, because we've been together 20 years. Right. And our friends separately become kind of like our collective friends. Right. But because of how they came into the group, just because that relationship severs doesn't mean that I have to cut ties with that person as well because I've formulated my own relationship right. with that person as Years well. Years of longevity exactly. with them. Exactly. Exactly. And where do we leave room for grown people to have <clears throat> grown relationships and to know where the line in the sand is right. with our people? When we get together, we'll talk about you. Yeah. When we get together, you don't talk about him. So anyway, Mel, I mean, Martel goes on to say, you know, she tried to turn everybody against me. Yo. <laughs> like everybody, she just. It's almost like he forget that he put all this into motion. Like that yeah. part. <laughs> you forget that part. <laughs> You turned everybody against you. You know what I mean? That part. <laughs> you do realize every if every opportunity you get to show out, Marcus shows out. Yeah. <laughs> so the. How everybody feels about you is basically a, a formulation of the skit that you've done yeah. in front of them or whatnot. So let's go ahead. Why my alarm going off? Hold on, y'all. Make sure I ain't got to break the glass. No, it's my mama. Are they All back right. already? They are. I told him to be back by 8.30. He had 817. Uh, but anyway, so we see in the episode that Kimmy and Mel had an opportunity to meet up, meet up for Taco Tuesday. Stormy was there as well. And I just love me some Kimmy because... Kimmy was like, okay, how did you feel that your slumber party thing went over? Mel said she felt like it went over well. Like, they had a good time. It did what it needed to be done. Kimmy Everybody like, looked good. Really? You think it went over well? <laughs> Kimmy said, well, let me let me have a conversation with you because I felt like the conversation I wanted to have with you, 
it wasn't the right place to have it right. in that moment. That's what grown people do. They hold it until, <laughs> until the right, right moment. time. She yep. said, but now, now we're in a more intimate setting where I feel like I can have this conversation with you. What the buck was that? Like, where did Kiki come, come in, from yeah. like, how did in all of this? So Mel goes to explaining that her and Kiki have a mutual friend. And her and this mutual friend have been the best of friends for over 14, 15 years. And occasionally Kiki's name would come up. And Mel was like, her and Kiki began to speak on the phone. Different things like that. And in the confessional, you could see that Kibby was like, you're saying all the right things, but my BS meter is all the way up at a 10 plus plus. Yep. And that's basically what it is. Kimmy was like, wait a minute. I've never seen Kiki at any, any of your new events. events. Yep. Any of the things that you've put on to as an, as, as anything that's celebratory for you, she's not been there. So all of a sudden that you and Tisha are not cool anymore. That's yep. when we see Kiki pop up. It's just so coincidental yeah. that you would invite her. But you know, if this is what you say, this is what you said is the reason that you invited her, then I have to go with it. But that's that DMV. Uh -huh. She's, she's <laughs> boosting <boo> you. <laughs> and Stormy was sitting there and, and everybody was having the same um, question. So, okay. So now that, so we got back on the Destiny thing. So now that you feel like you and Destiny are at a place where y'all met in the road, Y'all duked it out. Do y'all feel like y'all ever be friends anymore? And Mel was like, no, I feel like I've been a darn good friend to Destiny. And Destiny wasn't a darn good friend to me. And this is it. And I'm sitting here like, what happened? Yeah. What? What was a nail in the coffin on Mel's side with their... Because I thought they were still good. But... It seemed like whatever Mel heard through the walls <laughs> <laughs> sent it, you know, kind of canceled Christmas on the whole thing. Because that's what always comes up. I heard you talking about me through the walls. So, I... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And here's the thing. Kind of goes back to what you said when we first opened up. There are some people that feel like if you're not all the way with me, then you're all the way against me. So if you are talking to someone that I've fallen out with or I'm not cool with, then that means that we're now we're now enemies as well. Right. As mm -hmm. if people can't formulate their own boundaries within people that have a rip. I can't stand that. Because what you're not going to do is make me collateral damage between the stuff that I ain't signed up for. I ain't had right. nothing to do with it. Exactly. I ain't had nothing to do with it. So, um, uh, uh, amen to that. Amen, walls, amen, <laughs> lights. But uh, uh, so Kimmy brings up to Mel was like, you know, I want to put together a housewarming, apartment woman or something for Jalen. And I want to know, would you be open to coming? Because, of course, Marshall and Tisha will be there, their family. Right. You know, this person will be there, that person will be there. And she said, the only person that I did not want to invite, and this is on account of the conversation that I've had with you is Martel because we have come to a meeting of the minds that whenever you're present, I won't invite him. Yeah. If he's going to be present, I won't invite you. So then Mel turns it all around and goes into the, well, did you have that same, same energy? energy. Blah, blah, blah. And Kimmy was like, wait, 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 wait. We have had the conversation and this is what we're going to do going forward. The feelings that I have towards Mar uh, Martel are still the feelings I have towards Martel. I feel like Martel is a great guy. He has great qualities right. about him. But at the same time, basically what she was saying was, I've never been in a relationship with him. So that's as far as my feelings need to go towards Martel. Right. For him to be your husband and to be in and doing the stuff that he did, then that's on y'all. Right. They ain't got nothing to do with me. I still feel like he's a great guy. I know people that have, they are Fucked up in a relationship. Yeah. But they're good people in their core. Right. That don't make them a <clears throat> messed up person. It just means they're a messed up person to be in a relationship. And, and Kimmy's main thing was, he is a great guy, but he got a lot of drama that's following him right now. Right. And I don't have time for that right now. So that's why I chose you. Mm -hmm. And basically, you come to my son's 
house mm -hmm. and act a fool. Yeah. That's why I'm gonna have to put the paws on me. <laughs> in my scrappy voice, I'm gonna have to put the paws on me. Cause what you're not gonna do is bring that around my kid's house. Ooh. But anyway, so now we see Wanda, she goes to meet up with Tisha and I was really, listen. Yeah, this was like, even Tish, Tisha was like, huh? Listen, yeah. <laughs> I'm country as they come. <laughs> And even I need an interpreter about all oh, that skit. Yeah, la, yeah. I'm like, usually I could. I'm like, oh, that means such and such and such and such. I don't know yeah. what the hell Wanda was talking about. Yeah. So Wanda meets up with her, and she was like, basically, where Mar, uh, where Marceau at? Like Tisha said, it's a weekend. You know, he's he's, he's at black. black. I mean, he's he's handling business. I got confused because. Wanda just presented a business license. Didn't a couple of episodes ago, we saw that they decided they were going to invest in the food truck. Right. So you're investing in your mother-in-law without a business license already? <laughs> All right. I know it's made for TV. It is what it is. <laughs> so Tisha tells her mother, you know, because it seems like Wanda wants more money because she said the food truck is just sitting there. Yeah, sitting there. Yeah. I need Marcel to give me more money. Monies. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute. But Tisha said, you know what? I'm going to need you to shadow a couple of people. The in and it is. The restaurant business is the hardest business one to get into and the one to sustain. Sustain it, yeah. Because you will go under quicker they than on, They operate on very low margins, mm -hmm. man. So she said, we'll get you to shadow the chef. We'll get you to shadow someone in the back office. Because you need to know what's coming in, what's going out. And she said, okay, bet. Then this when we got into the conversation about the kiki and whatnot. So Tisha tells her mama, like, That's listen. That's when the interpreter need to show up. <laughs> she said, I had a conversation with Kimmy. And here go Wanda. Because you know she got a thing for Kimmy. Uh-huh. <laughs> and she said, no, no, no. Me and Kimmy are in a good place. Like, we're building upon what, you know, the conversation that was happening at the reunion. She explained it. And I, I have to just fall back, agree. And we can move forward. And we are building and we're in a good place. But she said she was over at Mel's house. And I wasn't invited. Neither was Destiny. But who was invited was Kiki. Wanda was like, mm, uh -huh. <laughs> what's that all about? <laughs> what's that all about, Tisha? <laughs> so Tisha was like, you know, basically there was a whole lot of conversation about me at this event that I wasn't even invited to. So Wanda said, you know what? My mama always said, <laughs> don't trust nobody that buy shoes that don't come in the box. I was like, even Tisha was like, because I was like, uh, we know that you guys grew up in poverty. And we grew up, I'm not going to call it poverty. but we It was. But we didn't have a whole lot of money. We had no box without shoes either. And all the shoes <laughs> that we got from the dollar store. They just had the straight. They had the straight that you had to cut with the scissors or the freaking plastic piece. So none of us, this is a big trust. Skip. <laughs> if that's the case. And I guarantee you, that's what was going through Tisha's mind. Like, all of our shoes came like that. They weren't no box when we was growing up. If you had a box, you sure ain't had the top half of the time. But anyway. Because matter of fact, when you was finally able to get a pair of shoes in the box, you was excited. You kept the box. Yes. <laughs> Maybe that's what our problem is with boxes now. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> we have a problem with boxes. Like, we went through yesterday and cleaned out. We keep boxes for some strange reason. Put in the comments, do y'all keep, keep boxes? Yeah, like your shoe boxes. Shoe yeah. boxes. Electronic boxes. I guess yeah. if you ever feel like you need to take it back. <laughs> oh, you or sell, sell it. it in you box? have the original box. Like, I don't get it. Yeah. Like yesterday, that's what, that. I think that's what it is. Though. Yeah. But anyway, so Wanda <laughs> tells um <laughs> tells Tisha, listen, when Kiki decided to call your name, <laughs> then she called my <laughs> name, and she need to watch her back. <laughs> she needs to watch. Her back. I said, wait a minute. And she said, you know what? This is what I don't get with Kiki. She always, she always jealous of the image of your marriage. Yeah, the, the image, image of you. Like image. The, and your image. And I said, I'm like, huh? What the hell is she talking about? Interpreter, can you? What she say? <laughs> In your image. In your image. <laughs> We're not going to go there. But anyway, let's move forward. Tiffany. We see Tiffany have a conversation with Mel and whatnot. 
and she brings up the fact that she's kind of been thinking about having another baby and the reasoning for her wanting to have another baby is that she just feels like she's such a nurturer and her children are getting older and they don't need her anymore right. and she says i really feel the need to be needed like and i'm like girl Open you up a side hustle or something. Yeah, uh-huh. Because I get, get it. Get you a dog or cat or You ain't never lying. Right. <laughs> but, um, and so, um, you know, um, Mel was giving her, like, the rundown of when you have a baby and you're running business, like, it does get tough, but it can be done. You know, like, I had my babies in my office, playpen and all. Right. You know, but, um, you know, how does your husband feel about it? And she was like, it's always kind of been like an open conversation and whatnot. But she said, even with that said, when I had my son, I bled for a very long time and I had to end up having a DNC. And they said that it was something that was hereditary. And because I'm adopted, I don't have a lot of history about who my people are. Right. Um, I feel like this is a time for me to go, you know, search out because she said she met her bio mom. mom already. Yeah. But she needs to find her bio uh, dad yeah, and she yeah. wants to go to Utah and whatnot. And I kind of felt like Mel kind of invited herself. Oh, she did invite herself. <laughs> to go on this trip to Utah to find Tiffany's people and whatnot. Because she said, you know, I'm an investigator. I am known to crack a case and all it is. I was like, I don't know about all that. But anyway. Um, <laughs> so then we see Tiffany. She goes back home. And she don't set up this nice little rendezvous type of thing for her and Louis. Live sax player, got a Live, chef in there, with not. Chef, yeah. I felt uncomfortable for the um, chef and them because I'm like, y'all got these little sexual yeah. little pat, 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 pat. And they like this. And they like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> awkward. But she brings up the conversation to Lewis <sighs> at that table about what it was that she felt like she wanted to do to meet her and seek out her bio father. So Lewis immediately was like, so, oh, is this what this all wooing yeah, me thing was yeah. all about? Like, did you lay it on thick to let me know that this is what you wanted to do? That you wanted to turn something we've talked about, something I was excited about being a support Both system, was, yeah. into a girl's trip? Like, when did this happen? And in, And I'm with Lou on that one. Like, that is big. Like, that is something that... Your mate needs to actually be able to be there with you to yes. navigate you through especially, it and after. Especially if he was, since he was looking forward to doing right. it. Right. So now here, oh. You want to take your girl? Take her? Oh. Yeah. Okay. And like he said, he was like, I felt like I was need to be really in, in actuality. I kind of felt like Tiffany kind of belittled him and yeah, right. his ability to be. The strong man in the relationship because she was like, you know, I need somebody that's gonna be more aggressive. Yeah, and somebody that's gonna ask the more questions that I need to be asked. And you're more like passive and laid back in the cut. And I was like, oh, I yeah. don't like how that came out. But I get yeah. what she's saying. Like, we are like my husband is like the laid back person, but don't buck with me. <laughs> that's when you see the <clears throat> yeah. he is a Leo to his core. He was like, okay, all right, I'm cool. Hey, how you uh -huh. doing? Oh, what? Oh, okay, I got that. Yeah, and I feel like that's kind of, yeah, hostage. I kind of feel like that's what Lewis is. <clears throat> like, he's cool until he's not cool. Cool, yeah. And um, so we learned in this conversation that it's kind of like a mind bug to Lewis as well because her ex, Tiffany's ex, was able to meet... Tiffany's bio mom. Yeah, he helped it. <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> yeah. this is an opportunity for Lewis to meet the bio uh, dad. Right. And now you're telling him, no, I don't want you to go. Yeah. yeah. I want to take make this a girlfriend's trip. That's kind of a mind book. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> I was like, mm. And then Lewis was like, you know, you trying to bring a baby into this mix? He was like, mm, yeah, no, nah, we do is, And all you do is work. All we do is work, and we on the road all the time. And I was like, y'all are on the road. Y'all are on different paths in the same household. But like my soul said, you can't give me no advice. Because right. y'all ain't navigated through this thing enough right. to be able to tell me skin. And that's exactly what he was telling them. Yeah. yeah. So they going through the stages of trying to figure it out right now in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Because we all go through it. <laughs> Them beginning years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes I look at Stella, I was like, why are you here? Why yeah, I mean, because you got, you got two people that was independent for years mm -hmm. having to merge their lives together. Yeah, that don't happen overnight. No, it doesn't. Yeah, because you, you fight for your independence. And I love my... Like, there are some people <clears throat> that love to be single. I loved it. That's like, why when Stella came along, I was like... Like, that time when I, I had forgot... I, I know I was married, but I had came <laughs> I home. I was curious and wait. I had came home like later than I normally would. I just kind of hung out a little bit after work, mm -hmm. and I came to the house. Like, Where you been? Where the hell you been? I was like, I'm just I'm chilling after work. So you ain't think to just let me know just what was going on? me. I was like, oh yeah, I, yeah, forgot I kind of forgot. Part. Yeah, because I used to do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. So now I have to consider <clears throat> someone else's yeah. feelings. But anyway, so Wanda. Wanda rolled up over at Kiki's house looking like an apostle. <laughs> yeah, like she was ready to bring a word. I, oh, she brought, she brought a she word. She brought a word. Yep. It won't a word of it deliverance. from the Lord, though. No. <laughs> so she goes immediately into questioning Kiki about the party, why she was there. Mm -hmm. And she was like, Kiki, I don't like that snake behavior. You know, that snake <laughs> behavior is the skit that I don't like. And when I, Kiki was like, listen, when we talk about snake behavior, let's not forget how all of the rift between me and Tisha even began. She was like, from the beginning, I could find it in my cousin who was like a sister to me, some of my personal business. Mm -hmm. And she ran around and told my personal business and put that out there to the streets to some people that ain't had nothing to do with it. So now that I decided to do the same thing, now it's a problem. Now it's a problem and <clears throat> now I'm the snake in the grass and whatnot. Now here's the problem I got with what you got going on, Kiki. Like Tisha has said, we've talked about it, we've cried about uh -huh. it, we've broken bread we, about it, yeah. we've toasted about it. And it still keeps coming up. And you, and it's almost like every opportunity you can take you bring it up. to hit me again, Yeah, you hit me with the same thing that you said you were healed about, yep. and I don't like that. Just like on Friday. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> every time what you call it came around, he was like, why you keep on well, bringing up old stuff? I'm sorry about what happened down at yeah. the shop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything go pathetic, no. So uh, Yeah, we talked about Friday. We talked about I love pranking. I Pinky. Pinky, when he showed up and created the party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Kiki was like, so who's a real snake and who's not? So Wanda says, so this is what we're talking about. <laughs> you ain't talking about stuff that happened four years ago. You need to learn to let that go. <laughs> when, I, when I come to you, I always bring you fresh news. <laughs> I'm gonna use that. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I always bring you fresh news. I always bring you fresh news. <laughs> you always keep trying to read all shit. <laughs> she said, "No, this is fresh this news." Is fresh news. I bring it to you. <laughs> so Kiki said, "Cut the skit. Let me tell you what it's really all about." She said, "Y'all grew up in the projects, and y'all were poor." And my family had a little something, something. And they always kept me from you all. But you want to know what I did? When mm -hmm. I became old enough to make my own decisions, what did I do? I came over and I integrated myself into my family so that I can get to know. And me and Tisha got cool. And from there on out, it's always been that big old J word. J word. Jealousy. Yeah. She's jealous of me. I'm jealous of her. We're jealous of each other's house. I'm jealous of somebody's marriage. And she was like, I'm sick and tired of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here like, is this what it's really about? Like, it's a tit for tat that really don't have nothing to do with Tisha or Kiki. It's a family thing oh, mm -hmm. that's putting two people against each other that are more alike than you probably would ever right. even want to believe. Two families competing about something they don't even give a hill of beans. It don't make a difference. About some coin that yeah. one either has and one doesn't have. Right. And it happens every day or the God don't wait. Yeah. So basically this was the end of the episode. When I say that's why I said it was like BS, it was really nothing to it. But baby, <laughs> when I say that this show uses social media as its own built-in tool. Yeah, it do. They really do. Like now we <clears throat> see that up and coming, we have um, the 
You know that it's been reported that Marceau was in the hotel bed and we've seen a picture of his back with possibly his tattoo because he was in bed with another woman, you know, allegedly. Now that's going to come into play on the show. So I can't wait till like this real good juicy yeah, this, part of this, the show this come this in. ATL part um, 2.0 that's coming up. Yeah, Lou so we is... come, Like we said, we don't want to see that picture all episodes, so now they flipping it and going back to ATL. Another picture. Yeah, now they taking Lou. Yeah, so now he, Lou, he's, he's sexually, sexually frustrated. frustrated. Um, we <clears throat> see a couple of YouTubers that have made their um interest. Yeah. Um, um, premiere, not premiere, <laughs> debut, <laughs> debut, can't talk. Um, Keisha K. Lee. Um, we see that Martel is now questioning Kimmy about her decisions to mm -hmm. keep him on the outskirts like, yeah. when she invites Melly. Well, now I'm sitting here like, Marta, don't act like you don't understand. Right. Why people don't invite you. You yeah. act the fool. And y'all act the fool together. But one thing that I do want is when it is a more male-dominated event, that's the event for Martel to be at. Like yeah. the housewarming thing for Jalen, I can <clears throat> kind of see why Martel should have been invited more than male should have been invited right. because you need more of a male presence because it's a male's housewarming. But we know, but we, we know, know Kimmy is from the DMV and she's gonna choose the path of least drama. Yeah. Yes. And then and that, and that sucks. That day on Kiki and that Tisha seem like they went head to <clears throat> God doing head, and people was trying to hold Kiki back. People mm -hmm. was trying to hold Tisha back. Then I looked. Yeah. My soul was like, say it. Say, say it, it yeah. with your chest, <laughs> little thing. I was like. Yeah. So, yeah, I can't wait to that episode. I'm pretty sure it's not the next one because they always And I'm pretty sure they probably just, they tossed and turned this thing. Yeah, yeah. Chopped yeah. and screwed it so that right. we'd be mm -hmm. hype about nothing. Just right. like when we thought that there was a big old fight at Mel's, um, when she did her song release party or record yeah. release party. And we ain't seen an ambulance <laughs> yet. <laughs> so, good. I don't want to see no ambulance, but y'all put it out there, there like somebody called an ambulance. <laughs> so, on that note, y'all. All right, y'all. If you new here, go back to the first video and get caught back up on the reviews. And we're going to catch you in the next video. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two, two, two down. Holla. Holla. Boom.